The German panzers would move too fast. And that can happen. It's moving out in front of your troops. And that can really be dangerous. Stretching out the German panzers is one way to defeat them. And that would be uh, proved up in Russia. But it would not be effective here. The German panzers, while they would outrun their supplies, they really had a, a very easy time of it in France. Far easier than Britain ever, ever imagined. And once France would fall, you really had almost no resistance whatsoever. You've got a Colonel de Gaulle at this time. He would not be made general until actually after the fall. And he would very defiantly want to lead the resistance, but um, history probably gives him more credit than the Germans ever gave him. And ultimately, as George said, France would be divided into zones of occupation. And we've seen the zones of occupation many times around the planet at many times in history. And just understanding what it means to occupy a country. <laughs> And we look at these zones of occupation. And again, the red zone is going to be 70% of the population. And the blue zone is going to be the smallest amount. You've got some Italian occupation on the side. So Italy was pretty uh, fortuitous to, quote, get in on the, on the spoils. They really were. But I can't say I blame them. And France would effectively remain this way. There would not be a Allied soldier in France until June 6, 1944. So he would, again, the terms would be read. The radio is the primary method of communication, of course, at this time. And now all of France is really subject to colonialization. And just a little point of privilege, one of the things that always uh, I guess gulls me about Charles de Gaulle. <laughs> if I ever had th uh, 30 seconds alone with him, I'd say, well, sir, your country was occupied and you were a German colony for four and a half years. Did you like it? I think the answer would be no. No, we did not. Wonderful. So upon liberation, why did you race back to Southeast Asia, a place called Vietnam, and spend the next five years and billions of dollars trying to recolonize people. And you think about that with France. They were colonized for four and a half years by Germany. And we can pretty well agree they weren't too happy with it. Yet the minute the war was over, they raced back to Southeast Asia to, install, to reinstall their same colonies. So that's why I like to say we, we study history to learn from it, but we rarely learn from it. So we look at Germany's European plan. Well, A, was to gain back the lost territories in the Treaty of Versailles. And they did that rather quickly from the period of 1936 to 1938. B, was to establish a series of buffer states. And really when you look at what is Poland, what is France, these are buffer states to protect from future invasions. Mission, they, they accomplished that as well. When you look at Germany, East Prussia, this is a part of, of Germany that was in Poland that was separated, that was reunited. And the whole key here is to acquire more territory for this expanding German Empire. And this was a time of empires. The British Empire, like we said, 20% of the planet. The French Empire had over 40 colonies. The American Empire spread throughout the South Pacific. So this was a time of empires, Japanese empires. We're going to learn about in about three, four more chapters. This was their European plan. And like I say, agree or disagree, I try to put a thing of logic because I really felt that this was a very logical national security move for the Germans. And we look at national security, why do we do things? National security, we do things in our own best interest. Certainly, we would not allow our country to have our national security needs dictated by another. Well, Germany, I think, has the right to feel that way. And when you look at the strong nationalism during this period, this was actually rather consistent. This was not that far out of the norm. I think what was a bit out of the norm is they were so successful. 
I think when they drew up this mega plan, like most plans, they were not anticipating complete success. And thus, I think I would call this mission accomplished from a German point of view. So here you are in 1940, you've defeated France, you've reunited your German colonies, you've got your buffer states, you've got Poland, you've got East Prussia, your security is there, your economy is moving along. Um, I would applaud Adolf Hitler on a job well done. I might be in small company perhaps.